Okay, squash and stretch part two. Now, what I want to do is to let's take and we started out with this in part one and we built this up. Let's just review this very quickly. So you can see uh, what I was doing was adding uh, all of these various elements. And we, we built we built from just a gesture going up and now, from there, uh, building up, building up. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to take and bend, bend the figure over. Now, in doing this, I'm taking and, uh, of course, I'm working without model. And this is the advantage of a uh, construction approach to taking and doing the drawing, is that in doing this now, I can take and the first idea is the gesture, the figure is I want to lean the figure over. So now I'm just thinking leaning over. So now in doing this, I focus on just a simple volume. So you can see that this volume now is taking and building. I'm taking and thinking of the center of the form coming through. I can add the head. I'll bring down, say, the arms coming down on the other side. And so now I'm developing a different stretch. So uh, we go through this then. Now let's just take and get in a little tighter here. We can see, uh, fill up the whole screen here. So now we're getting a stretch now. We're pulling, we're pulling a stretching across the back and I'm putting this line into the spine. And now in focus on in doing this, I want to keep in, in mind now that this is a cylinder. So I'm really, or a sphere I should say, and it's really coming around. And we would see the other side of the sphere and the neck Let's take and pull the neck in here and let's take, say, uh, maybe the head is turning towards us. So now I would take and I think of the top of the head. I'm going around the surface this way, down, visualizing where the ear would be. And at the same time, since where the head is in this the position here we would actually be getting a little bit of compression in the back and a little stretching in the front coming through I build build the scapula on top so notice and this is the this is really the advantage now of a construction approach to taking and doing the drawing you first you get the gesture and then you start to take and you build you build the forms one on top of the other. And this allows you to draw from the imagination. And uh, whether you're dealing with an animation or comic books, uh, you're taking and in constantly inventing and constructing uh, figures. It allows you to take and uh, do things. Uh, you're not restricted to the scrap that you have. Uh, although I started out with a, a pose uh, from a model, uh, I'm now taking and totally drawing from imagination. So now the compression here, you have to take into consideration now that as we did with the uh, bag up here, we take and now we bending this over so that we taking and are seeing the pull, the compression on the one side and the stretching on the other. Now, the critical part here is, is that you really focus on where the corners of the form are and how forms take and come out from, the, from behind. And that I was dealing with that in the uh, part one. So now we can think, start thinking now, 
that these forms are really coming out from behind and we'd be getting more of a compression as we pull from behind we're building the form and even here now I could take and say well if this particular pose now if somebody's really bending over like this maybe the leg would come out a little bit more so I could take at this point then I can take and start to adjust I can say well maybe this leg's going to come out this way so then I'm thinking of a of a cylinder again I'm pulling the figure out around uh, I'm going to take and maybe pull the leg coming off over here so the figure now is starting to maybe lift up or I could even imagine that the other leg uh, comes through and I could even have the other foot underneath although that looks a little strange I don't think that would work uh, and okay, pulling out so there's notice that there's not that much anatomy involved here it's primarily very very simple very 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 simple forms and that allows you to take and, and, and work uh, rather quickly. You can try different possibilities uh, of how you will want to go with the figure. Then we take and focus like on the rib cage. <clears throat> I'm taking and talking about overlapping forms, but I'm thinking of this as a spherical form. I'm really pushing and even and then we deal with the rib cage, the uh, extra curve we have in the back coming up I would take and feel the scapula uh, pushing up on the other side coming through we feel the neck again see everything is overlapping you deal with overlapping forms like where the clavicle is coming through and coming around there would even be a bit of a twisting taking place in the neck since the figure is turning coming around or the head is turning anyway uh, coming through you as the forms go back and are going down uh, again I would be looking at the shoulder area as a cylinder and we would see the top edge of the forms we feel the deltoid pushing down we would be pulling out from behind uh, in this case now I would take and be seeing uh, the condyles the end of the ulna uh, we feel how the overlapping forms come through so you can see at this point that uh, quite uh, we get a quite reasonable figure with uh, not a lot of effort here and it's speedy I've, I've only spent uh, eight minutes here taking and going through and getting a figure blocked in and so that's something that we could be built on very very quickly uh, even here now if I was to take this figure and let's just say uh, I wanted to take and put clothes on it well drapery drapery becomes a great tool then for taking and showing gesture let's just go this figure down a little bit now and I'll take and add add clothes well what do we do with the clothes well we use drapery the, to do exactly the same thing in other words for instance let's just say that uh, she had some kind of a a skirt on I would be taking in thinking of the skirt pulling from behind uh, let's get this on a different layer here I would be taking and pulling the skirt coming from behind going around so the the line of the top of the skirt accomplishes the same thing as just lines drawing over the figure and I would be using a, a folds in this case that's a half lock fold going around then we could even take and here uh, we could build folds where the leg is going we feel the pull of the drapery would be coming across and going over uh, if it's fairly full skirt we could have the material 
taking and going around the leg, uh, coming out fairly loose here, uh, pulling across to the other knee. See, all of these are taking and dealing with the same thing as, as muscles. So I'm taking and using basic forms to take and show, stretch, pull, we could take and now we could start to feel more of a compression taking place. And so if I take and have a skirt, or let's, let's take a blouse, say a long sleeve blouse, all I would be taking and going around the wrist and we could feel the pull, the stretching that takes place and the way the folds would take and wrap around. Uh, we could even think of the seam uh, of the blouse, the extra gathering material around the collar going around. And particularly, uh, let's just say it's uh, fairly tight, maybe it's pulled up a little bit. And we could see the stretching here by just the fact that we're getting a pull. It's pulled away from the skirt. And we, we get the folds taking and pulling around from stretching, going underneath, coming across. Uh, we could even maybe create if something coming around. We would feel the other shoulder sticking up. Uh, we could feel, okay, here, I forgot we have a breast here. Well, we could take and feel the folds overlapping, uh, coming through, uh, and creating a little bit of sag. So you can see how the same concepts we're talking about in drawing the clothes figure apply to the, the nude. You're taking in being very conscious of the uh, stress, strain, compression, all of those physical qualities that give us a sense of realism. And it's being able to look at your, uh, at your subject and drawing as if you were, in drawing from your imagination, as if you were actually seeing a person. So it's, you're, you're building on information of observation uh, that you take every day, uh, experience looking at people. You're constantly analyzing folds, how people stand. Just You go outside every day and you draw people doing real things so that you can then draw from imagination uh, the taking and dealing it. Okay, so this is, the, uh, I think, a good uh, example now for taking and uh, taking the next step. So let's just take, go back and see, now what did, what did I just actually do here? Okay, here, I've added the drapery. Uh, I've taken and constructed the figure. In other words, I built on top, I just bent it over. I could have used a few more steps in there, uh, but you can see the process that we're taking and going through. Uh, here, I actually, uh, just before I started this thing, I did a sort of test just to get a sense. So you can see now that here, I did the same thing, except I was drawing the figure a little bit higher. Uh, you could actually take this, uh, same, taking the same idea here and uh, pushing the figure in trying to take and make it go, say, in the opposite direction. In other words, I think taking here, I could take and very easily make the figure uh, lean back farther, going back more in this direction, and maybe even turning so we're getting a, a twist, which would be really could be quite extreme. But now that could be interesting. See where you're taking and maybe this arm is raised up. Thinking of a simple cylinder. Now this is what I'm doing now. See, this is the goal for basically my teaching is to take and train people so that they can take and draw from imagination. They can construct, they can build, they can uh, basically work so that you're not restricted 
to what you're uh, looking at. And professionally, this is, becomes an absolute necessity. Uh, whether you're doing storyboards, uh, animation, uh, even as a painter, my skills are all developed uh, as a painter, taking and developing compositions and doing figurative paintings from imagination. Okay, uh, I hope everybody is getting a little something out of this. Uh, take and, and uh, you can take my classes at the American Animation Guild. Uh, I teach regular classes there or the Vilpu Academy. Uh, vilpuacademy.com